Dave Hansen from a movie slap shot. Let's go get him. I've been trying to call him forever. Dave! Hey, Dave! Dave, it's me. It's me, John. I'm gonna call you back. I'll get back. Dave, I've been calling you for months. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good. hey, good to see uh, yeah, you. Yeah, I thought. So we're, we're being videotaped? Yeah, this is a videotape oh, here. Right. Y'all want to just talk to you about a couple things, if you don't mind. I mean, I've been, like I said, I've been trying to call you, set this up, but I figured I'd just pop in. You, you, you wouldn't mind. Well, you didn't have to wear the hands for the glasses with the fake nose <laughs> just to come over, but that's fine. Why don't you close the door? Yeah. All right. Here. Closed door session with Dave. Hansen. Dave, um, you don't mind if I sit on your important no, papers, no, do no, you? No. First of all, thanks for inviting me here. Appreciate that. <laughs> so, sure. So, Dave, just tell us a little bit about, you know, the quick story of how Dave Hansen becomes, goes from hockey player to movie star to pop culture star and can't get rid of it now. Well, it all starts with good looks and intelligence. <laughs> I know this Which feeling. I don't have any, so. Uh, <laughs> but, well, it's just, you know, the quick version is I was a hockey player in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, of all places, in my first year pro. And uh, the team that we had had a guy on the team that uh, had a sister as a screenplay writer. And, and he, uh, in a drunken stupor one night, was uh, talking to her in Los Angeles on the phone and started telling her all about, you know, the, the mill shutting down and the town he was playing in and these three goofy brothers and this guy named Killer Hanson and the league, et cetera, et cetera. And, and she couldn't believe it and came out and visited us for a couple of weeks and saw for, for herself and then decided to write a movie about it. They couldn't find good enough, good looking, uh, smart enough actors that could skate well enough to play the role, so they just kind of plucked us in there and the rest is uh, cinematic history as they say. I remember you telling a story one time about how uh, they wanted to move the Hansons into a franchise to do other sports and you guys said, now we want to be hockey players. Well, yeah, that, 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 as soon as, even before we finished the film, they wanted us to sign us a seven-year movie contract, and they even had another script as us being roller derby players. Uh, and uh, you know, we said, look, we're not actors. We're, we're trying to be hockey players. Uh, and unless you can work it out so that we do film and only in the off season and allows us to continue to pursue our hockey career, we don't have an interest. And, Again, like, you know, stupid hockey players, <laughs> we made the wrong decision there, and, uh, and instead of <laughs> running around with uh, Raquel Welsh and all the hot babes in Hollywood, we were running around with hockey groupies on bus trips. <laughs> Can't say you didn't have any fun doing that, though. We're a hard-hitting news agency here, and, you know, I'm going to hit you with some really tough questions. Okay. I mean, I don't want you to get nervous, I mean, uh, but you have some funny stories of people that we know currently, like uh, Boudreaux. Well, yeah, you know, Bruce, uh, everybody has seen him on HBO series and certainly uh, behind the uh, Capitals and, and now Anaheim bench. And, and uh, Gabby actually uh, played in Johnstown. He was my roommate and uh, was on the team for a year. And, and uh, he was about a half a size bigger than he is now. I should say half a body or person bigger than he is now. But he could still eat like, uh, like nobody's uncle. We were on a road trip up Cape Cod, Maine. Uh, up in Cape Cod going through the, the whole uh, New England state trip and, and uh, we went out for a, a pre-game meal uh, and we were at this place where on the menu they had a you know, one of those specials if you can eat this 28 30 ounce steak and everything on your plate uh, you get the meal for free well Gabby not only ate the entire meal he ordered seconds uh, so you know that he, <laughs> that was one of his downfalls I'd have to say is that uh, he wasn't, uh, wasn't tuned into uh, high-level training. Dave, I like to I like to just finish up because I wanted to show you how much of a fan I, I want to put on the foil with you, Dave. I want to, I, I, you know, me, you, Gordy, Howe, the whole thing. I want to, I want to put on the foil. Yeah, John, there's certain things that certain people can do, and and I can't do that. Can, I'm you, sorry. can you show me how to do it? Uh, no. Can you hold on right here while I go to the men's room and put on the foil? You're going to put on the foil in the men's room? <laughs> Someplace secret, because I don't want anybody to identify me, you know. I'll be right back, Dave. Stay there, Dave. Stay. Just stay there, Dave. I mean, the concerning part is what if I say no again? Dave, I'm all foiled up and ready to go. Me, you, Gordy Howell, the Hanson Brothers. Check it out, man. I'm ready to go. I'm all foiled up. What a jago.